Greetings, fellow mercenaries, Rodamon here. Thank you for tuning in to War Tales. Episode 3, Sinister Cave. Alright, let's go east to the Herminal Gang and fulfill that contract. So I'm going to depart and head this way. And I'd also like to start collecting resources in order to be able to craft better camp supplies. So one of my, like, side goals, let's call it, is going to be to try to get a cooking pot up so that we can have a chef. Honestly, it sounds not sexy, but cooking is amazing in this game for, like, massive bonuses. Massive bonuses. So it's really, really strong. And then also getting um, potentially a hitching post up as well so that our ponies can carry more weight so we don't get over over uh, encumbered. So collecting all of the raw resources that we see on the hillsides as we ha travel to the um, to the contract locations is definitely going to be useful. Cooking is OP as hell in this game. Yes, uh, absolutely. I'm new to the game, but I know that much. Oh, I thought this dude was wounded. No, he was just straight dead. Sorry, man. Wasn't able to save you. Oh, we are being attacked by wolves. Three wolves. Well, I wanted leather, so, uh... Rant. Alright, so the wolf that acts first is this one. Then I take... Turn number two, turn number three, and then these wolves. There's also this giant spear here, which would be cool to try to use in combat. There is comfrey here, which can remove stacks of poison, bleeding, and burning, and heal a dying, dying ally. So the way the, the death works, I'd like to avoid death as much as possible in this game, and I don't want to have to save scum if I can help it. The only times I would consider save scumming if it was going to be a full wipe, but if, like, a single person dies, I'll consider not save scumming. It really depends. But, um, when you're dying... So, if you take mortal damage, there's like a willpower saving throw of whether or not you're dying or not. And then when you're dying, you still have regular turns. But any additional damage will kill you forever. And then, in your turn, you, can, you cannot fight. But you can try to move to things like Comfrey in order to remove the dying status. Or a teammate with Valor Points, could use First Aid to remove the dying status. So having, like, one Valor Point banked, in case you have someone that becomes dying, uh, can be very handy. Um, also, we become um, galvanized pretty early on, after, like, one kill. So focusing on a single wolf and ganging up on it quickly uh, is going to be pretty ideal. Now, if we take a look at the, uh, the distance that these wolves can travel... It's going to be very hard for me to outrun them. So my plan is to lock this wolf down really early on with shield and then have diamond close in on these two wolves and poison AOE them. Uh, potentially having jazz. Uh, yeah, there we go. Let's move Flora. Yeah. What's uh, so this is an AOE ability. Got it. Okay. Let's do this. So we lock this wolf down. It attacks me. Next is Dai. And Dai is going to move here. Oh, no, not close enough. And A, we attack both wolves. Ouchies. And then move the hell back. Uh, FTT, congrats on winning the, uh, the raffle. Let me know what kind of name you want for your character. Alright, I think... I'm gonna have Kath move in. Okay, yep. I like that. And dead to poison. Galvanized. And also should be a Valor Point, because I think, if I'm not mistaken... No, it didn't count as Valor Point? Come on, that was Diamond's poison. He killed an enemy. Uh, whatever. Alright, so the next one that moves is this wolf. I don't really want it biting Kath's armor. 
So I'm going to have Jazz close in on it and stop it from doing that. And they're demoralized, but I'm not letting them flee. Come on, crit! Ah, oh, we crit! Alright, wolves are dead. So we gained carcasses, wolf meat, grease, and pristine fangs. Uh, Cat's armor got a little tooled up, but he also leveled up. So, Calf, how are you going to level up? Uh, what class for Cathanon? We've got Protector, Fighter, or Swordmaster. So before I put up the poll, the Protector has an encouragement. It's a 8 meter area where everybody within the area gets protection for two rounds, which reduces the damage taken by 30%. Pretty strong. It also allows um, the donning of heavy equipment. You know, heavy armor and heavy helmets. Uh, then we have fighter. Additionally, that is heavy armor, heavy helmet. Uh, destabilizing strike. Deals six to seven damage to the target and applies destabilizing for two rounds, which reduces their guard to zero. So this is sort of like a sunder, if you will, or swordsmaster. So swordsmaster, unlike the other two classes, excuse me, <coughs> uh, only can wear medium armor, and their special ability is laceration. Costs two valor points. So the other ones is uh, one valor point, one valor point. This is two valor points. Deals six damage to all the targets in the area, and is uh, usable after two attacks. So essentially, you need to build up attacks to be able to lacerate. Um, and then Lacerate is an AoE, uh, damage to everything around. So I'll have you guys decide. And these trees, if you're wondering, can be selected however. So, like, if I pick, let's say, Swordmaster, that doesn't stop me from picking Defensive Stance. Like, there isn't, you're not locked. Every time you level up, you're given a choice between them. So, you guys can vote on that for, let's say, one more minute while I mosey on over to our quest location. And I'm sitting on a decent amount of gold, so I wouldn't mind trying to buy... Ooh, what was there to inspect here? Oh, the other corpse. I wouldn't mind trying to buy better gear, too. Might I interest you in my humble wares, my good sirs? So, there's a medium helmet and a flaming bow. I'm going to buy the medium helmet. I kind of don't like the flaming bow. Um, and the reason is because fire in this game spreads to adjacent targets. So if you, let's say I shoot, if I set like an enemy melee on fire and the melee runs up to me and starts engaging me in melee combat, I'm going to catch fire as, as a result. Uh, and that is maybe not wanted. So I, I like to avoid fire so I don't like burn myself. All right, Kath. Looks like we're going with the fighter tree. And to award you, let's go ahead and use career plans to double up your constitution. Or actually, you know what? Let's double up. So as a fighter, let's double up your uh, strength. And then give you this new helmet. So this has, as long as this unit has no guard, they gain two rage every time they are attacked. And rage increases the damage by 5%. It's actually maybe not a great piece of gear for Kath, um, but it would be even worse for shield because shield is supposed to have really high guard. So shield has a guard of 14%. Kath only has a, sh a guard of, of two, you know? Um, so yeah, uh, It's better on his head, is I guess what I'm trying to say. All right. We're definitely heading in the right direction now. Ooh, and we found a sinister cave and got knowledge points. So how should I spend the knowledge points? We could spend it in knowledge? We could save it, spend in knowledge, 
I need to save this poll so I don't have to type it up again. A workshop, forge, alchemy. So saving it would be banking it so that I can afford something that costs two. Uh, so if I did that, I would maybe get restoration so that we can repair our gear a little bit easier. If I spent it in knowledge without saving it, I would maybe go with frugality so that we could pay cheaper wages. Um, in workshop, I would probably unlock campfire plus. In anvil, I would uh, unlock a new recipe after crafting a little bit. Now that we're getting some um, some leather and some iron, that should be possible. And an apothecary table, I would save it once crafting as well. Might I interest you in my humble wares, my good sirs? No, you might not. You wish for I do as I wish? I could include that. I feel like it would be the popular option every time, though, which is what I would worry about. Alright, so here's a guard outpost. I will never help the refugees after what happened. They are all just like Bertram. Lawless scoundrels, the lot of them. Nothing is beneath him. Bertram stole two cows and a calf from my brother-in-law. In one night, his family lost everything. Uh, so here's a new profession. Woodcutter? Um, Helga. I'm going to make you a woodcutter. So woodcutter is a strength profession. Learn how to chop wood. Place the cursor on the woodcutting circle and press left mouse button when the green circle overlaps the gray one to gather more wood. And you guys want me to save it, so I'll save it. So it's like this. And the circles get smaller every time. And I'm not good at these quick time events, so I will mess these up regularly. I got, them, uh, I, I got it that time, but that's not always going to be the case. So, uh... A lot of the locations will have random woodcutter opportunities, which is um, handy because it will increase the amount of wood that you have for crafting. So, for instance, if I wanted to save up for the cooking pot, now we have all the wood that we need. We just need a little bit more iron ore. Alright, back to the guard outpost. So there is a locked box with a golden key. Uh, what else is here? Hemp. And then this dude that wants to talk. To think that we have to camp out here because of some pig-headed bandit. That Bertram will stop at nothing to terrorize the Orkles. But when it comes to facing the guard, that's a whole other matter. You see that cave to the north? He's holed up in there. It's been three days and still he won't surrender. Bertram knows he's done for. Yet he continues defending his lair with such doggedness that we have no choice but to starve him to death. That's why I need mercenaries. He doesn't know you. He might even let you in if he thinks he can convince you to help him. And once you've gained his trust, you can finish him off for us. We'll make it worth your while, I promise. Okay. So, this is a situation. See that purple over there? This is one of the uh, scenario events. So there's a few of them for every region, and this is one such. So we'll gain 100 coin, 25 influence, and 20 progress in the scenario. All right. So then on the map here, we have uh, a different uh, color here for the scenario progress. And he wants us to go into the Sinister Cave. Which I'm sure they named themselves. So here's the cave. There's a, a locked box here. And I was hoping to actually have a... A thief. And I'm going to make Jazz my thief, I think. Instead of the uh, alchemist. So they both are dexterity based. But um, there's a lot of stuff to... Unlock pretty regularly. So the way to pick locks, you rotate the lock pick and hold left mouse button to insert it into the lock and the closer it is, 
you know, the more it unlocks, and then if you jiggle too much, it breaks. Very, like, Skyrim-esque. There's one. And two. Jazz just became an apprentice thief. Reduce the amount of suspicion gained from all sources. And this stuff is not owned. So I can just take it. Cool. So it's I didn't steal anything. I just opened a box that didn't belong to anyone. Alright, so there's Bertram here. And then uh, some other people. Let's talk to the other people first. I hate having to strong arm the farmers. But we have no other choice. The citizens of Tiltron refuse to hire us or share their resources with us. To think that four years ago, Bertram and I spent our days driving oxen. Seems like a lifetime ago. Ah, mercenaries. Did Fergus send you to help us? Rowan hired you to kill me. I beg of you, don't do this. We do not enjoy bullying the farmers, you know. We, we have no choice if we want to survive. Rovand is the one who must die. I will match his offer. In fact, I can pay you more. And you would be doing a good deed. Once he is gone, the farmers of Chiltern will have no one to protect them. We won't have to force them to share their resources with us. Kill the captain. It's the only solution. So I can either kill Bertram, the bandit, for Captain Rovand, or agree to kill Captain Rovand for Bertram. Either way, it's scenario progress. Um, the big picture here is that the Tiltron guard are somewhat xenophobic and are openly hostile to the war refugees coming in from a neighboring county. Um, Bertram here turned to crime. Think like Aladdin, where he stole, well, all right, he stole like two cows or whatever. But, like, he's stealing food to be able to feed himself and other refugees. So it isn't as clear-cut as bad guy bad, good guy good. Good guy is a little xenophobic, and bad guy is just trying to feed himself. Uh, hence the lack of a, you know, a, a clear and obvious side. Um, the guards are, like, too bad I can't fight them both. <laughs> I mean, I could leave, but that means that I wouldn't be getting, uh, you know, region progress. So I'll have you guys choose. Um, without spoiling too much, obviously this is going to come to a head and we're going to ultimately have to choose a side. Uh, but that choice is not being determined here. So I know I spoiled a little bit, but essentially what we choose to do here does not force us to always pick the guard or always pick the refugees. Um, it's a little bit more gray than that. And I actually really like that. I hate when games are like, you can either be good or bad, but not somewhere in between. Because it's like, oh, most of life exists in the in-betweens. So it looks like we're going to side with the guard by a small margin, at least this time. Bertram isn't exactly a refugee. He's more of a bandit than a refugee, but there'll be chances to side with the refugees in the future if you'd like. So we're fighting Bertram, the ringleader, the hoodlum, and a poacher. Got it. All right. So one important thing here. See that red circle? That red circle is a rock slide. Falling rocks will kill any unit they hit within a two-meter area at the end of round. Don't stand there. Stand there bad. Stand there really bad. Now, what I could try to do is use Jazz and use his vicious shot to knock this hoodlum into the red circle, crushing him to death. I know that sounds pretty horrible, but, like, that would be a tactic to use. Uh, other things before we start this fight... There is a torch here, which can um, set fire to the ground. I think it's probably best if instead of um, dividing and conquering, if I put all of my troops on one side of the engagement, this hoodlum who's taking the turn first here in the order will have to like traverse to me uh, and I, th I, I think I'd prefer that. So let's go ahead and put, uh, shield in front. And then Cathanon, Helga, Jazz, Diamond. Okay, good. And... 
Galvanization happens after one kill. Flee after... I don't think they'll flee. Not that we will respect a flea. So this hoodlum here can travel all the way up to Bertram, but not below Bertram. So if I move here, it can't, he won't be able to hit me. And just like before, uh, they have leader aggression, and then also the leader has um, higher deck strength constitution and cannot be captured. So there's ways to capture with ropes to capture uh, people, and then to bring them to justice. Um, so we can think about doing that once I have a lot more ropes and the like. Um, you could also do that with wild animals as well, to try to tame wild animals and use them as your, uh, as your own. And in this uh, particular fight, I'm going to spend one of my Valor points to weaken Bertram so his damage is lowered, so he's not going to, like, wallop me for a ton of damage. All right, so the next person that moves, I'm probably going to want to be someone like Jazz. Will Jazz be able to fire from that distance? I can always run if I have to, or it could be Helga. Maybe Helga. So I, I, what I want to do is I want, I don't want to stand anywhere where that hoodlum can hit me, but I want to stand somewhere where the, I can hit Bertram, which there's like a very small overlap. So there we go. I can hit Bertram, but this hoodlum won't be able to get me. Alright, next turn. It would be ideal if I could lock down the poacher. But no one can move close enough this round, so I'm going to have Kath catch up, and just stand there. There's really not much else to do. Now, if I end my turn... If I end my turn with Jazz standing next to a teammate, I gain additional uh, Valor points, so I'm gonna aim to do that as well. So I'll move Diamond up, only to move Jazz next to Diamond and gain that Valor point. So here's an example of Bertram using the Poison AoE, and he hits his own unit, because he doesn't care. Uh, only 44% chance to hit Bertram, so I'm just going to end my turn without firing. But I gained a valid point because I'm standing next to a teammate. Oh, thanks. You pu pushed me out of the poison. And here comes the rock slide. And the next rock slide is going to be pretty close to Jazz, so I don't want Jazz standing there. Alright, Kath. Let's move you over here. And I want you to destabilize the poacher. And then cleave them both. Pretty effective. All right, next is this, where he's already poisoned. He's poisoning me, but he's taken his own poison damage. So there's a cloud of poison here, which is indicated in this green. I'm already poisoned, so, like, it doesn't much matter, but what I'm going to aim to do with shield... Actually, maybe with die, to get more, uh, temporary points. Oh, you know what? I could move there. Yeah, I like that. So I gotta be careful about the whirlwind poison attack, because I don't want to hit any allies with it. So if I moved up here, I might actually hit Cathedon, but here I can hit Bertram and not hurt a teammate, which is ideal. So I gained a little bit more poison on, um, on shield. But, uh, let's kill the hoodlum. Because the poacher is stuck engaged in melee combat. So punching from the poacher is not going to hurt very much. Alright, there is another stab. Helga should be able to finish off Bertram here. Oh. That was brutal. He is very dead. He want, they want to flee, and um, we already pulled on this. I'm going to vote no on these. 
So she's poisoned. Everyone's a little poisoned. I'm going to get Jazz out of this poison field. Uh, I only have a 52% chance to shoot what I want to shoot, so I'm going to end turn here. Rocks collapse. And then we'll have, uh... Doesn't really matter who gets the finishing blow, so I'll give it to shield. There's no bonus XP for, like, finishing attacks or anything like that. XP is shared amongst everybody. So you don't need to really worry about, uh, who gets finishing blow. Loot. Repair. And this time I'll actually use medicine to heal. Alright. And then the captain wants to talk to us, but before I do any of that, is that dagger better? So yep, this dagger is a little bit better than the last one I had. It's like slightly higher level. So this one is a dex plus seven, and this one is a dex plus eight. Otherwise they were like identical. Inspecting Bertram's corpse, there's a golden key. So, Bertram is dead. My men and the good citizens of Tiltran will be glad to hear it. I must commend you for your courage and your devotion to our cause. Here is the reward the Lady Mayoress promised me. You deserve it. Goodbye. Fate of Tiltran. The villagers no longer have to fear Bertram. And we have 20 out of the 100 progress. Alright, there's not much else in this cave. And we're going to need to camp pretty soon. We're pretty exhausted. But there was this uh, golden chest over here that I happen to have the key for. And this has a... Uh, yeah, okay, that's not helpful to me at all. A brawling weapon. I don't have any pugilists, so, uh, yeah. Oh, well. Ah, uh, can... Yeah, I, I can't even use it. Great! Thanks, Bertram, for, you know, the, the treasure that cannot be used. I can sell it. Alright, we are coming up on my, um... My attack targets. The thing is, I'm about to have to camp, and I kind of don't want to camp right next to the enemies, because, you know, they'll ambush me. A refugee leader was caught. Wind of my actions, he wishes to meet me in the Haven. Haven is down here. So we can head to Haven after maybe this next contract. Or both of these contracts. Rylus, sorry about your, your bank account. Playing new games you've never heard of and then wanting to buy them. It is my fault. Alright, let's take a look. Can we make anything interesting? We can make a cooking pot. Let's do it. So, now that we have a cooking pot, I can go to my uh, camp inventory and just, like, plop it out here. And we get a new profession, which is camp cook. And assign cook. Assigning someone to the cooking pot reduces the troops' daily food consumption by two. Um... So I haven't done any, like, actual blacksmithing, so what I can do is I can just show you that, because I don't have any experience in blacksmithing. So the cook is a uh, constitution bonus, and uh, I'm going to give that to shield, because shield is our destroyer who's kind of our tank. Uh, so that's actually a good profession for shield to have. So then as a result, we only need, so 16 food, and then if, uh, if shield isn't on that, 18 food, so you, you can see the difference. And then if I right-click the cooking pot, with shield, uh, I can make wolf sausage. Because we killed a wolf, we gained wolf meat, and I can salt it. And as a result of wolf sausage, we can turn a salt and a four food into a six food. Plus I gain a little bit of uh, knowledge points for making it for the first time. So we gain knowledge points for making uh, bread and grilled pork for- well, not bread, but grilled pork for the first time. So maybe when I'm in town, I'll try to buy pork to gain extra knowledge points as well. So now there's um, a whole new cooking tree here. Um, as you can see, there's a lot of recipes. 
And when we spend knowledge points, uh, we can spend them in uh, in cooking, too. So, I literally just got a knowledge point, so let's decide on what to do with it. I could save it. I'm not entirely sure why I would save it. I don't have anything that costs three that is currently known. Um, if I spent it in workshop, uh, we could increase the level of our cooking pot so that assigned cooks reduce the daily food consumption by four and recipes have a chance to grant a 50% bonus. I could also do campfires for the extra happiness or I could do the workshop to dismantle low quality weapons into repair stuff. Uh, I don't really want to whip. I don't want to assign my companions to whip each other. That, that doesn't interest me. Um, I could uh, unlock new recipes in the cooking. So the reason to do this would be if I find myself, like, let's say, killing a whole lot of sheep, you know, unlocking the medium rare mutton recipe might be like a good way to spend it. Or like hemp tea, if I have a lot of, uh, uh, if I have a lot of um, hemp and, and milk. So there is a whole bunch of recipes there. Uh, so I can have you decide. And I don't know the other two yet, so we have to decide between these. Was there anything else I could make? So a camp chest uh, allows your assigned thief to sell soul items during rest little by little. I'm not planning on stealing any items, so I don't really need a camp chest as a result. And I'm going to make another rope. So ropes are useful for um, making bows, gears for navigation, and climbing. We can also aim to buy shackles, too, if we want to try to take prisoners. Uh, I did... wouldn't hurt to make some extra lockpicks. So that if I break a lockpick, we're not, like, stuck. And then... I already have one climbing pitten or whatever they're called, so I don't need to make another one. Alright, looks like you guys want me to spend it in workshop. So, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spend one point in workshop. And then re -pull to see if you want me to spend another one. So the first workshop thing I want to do is maybe a campfire. And Scorpio, thank you for the gifted subs. Not only today, but, but yesterday as well. Or uh, uh, Thursday, rather. Cheers. All right, and then I still have one more knowledge point. Uh, so in order to make this campfire, I need five charcoal, five sandstone, and five wood. And I can buy the charcoal and sandstone from uh, the town. You can also make charcoal by burning it in a, in a campfire. But I would need the campfire first, so it's like chicken and the egg. Um, the base campfire that you start with can't make charcoal. The next one can make charcoal, so it's a little bit different. Um, all right. So if we chose to spend it in workshop, so the next point, the next workshop thing I would go for might be the better cooking pot so that we can reduce our food consumption even further. But let's eat the freshly cooked wolf sausage as well as the carcasses, maybe some of them with some uh, apples and bread. Very carnivorous meal there with uh, just enough apples to avoid, you know, scurvy. <laughs> And there's the rest. All right, one more minute on this poll. And we have a happiness of 11. So the big bonus is obviously getting the happiness to 15, because then you get experience gain in combat is increased. And uh, any gain above 15 grants you five influence per happiness point. So you max out at 15, but if you go well beyond 15, you just start getting more influence. Uh, so there's obviously diminishing returns, but it is nice to at least get 15. Uh, one thing that hasn't happened yet, but can happen, is often when you are camping, your companions, like a companion will be chosen to have some sort of like major event. Well, not major, minor event. Whether they're like taking on a new trait or making a new friend or leveling up a little further. Um, and I'll have you vote in those as well when they come up. Come on, have good gear. Might I interest you, my humble wares, my good sir? Heavy armor. And a halberd. Uh, yeah, I want to buy the heavy armor. And I'm going to sell the dagger and the, uh, katar 
for it. And you guys want me to spend it in cooking. Got it. So, what do I want in cooking? Hmm. So syrup and tea. Syrup, if we could make syrup, increases the troops' happiness by two when consumed. Um, it would be powerful. I'm just, my only worry is whether or not we have um, the materials to make it often. Whereas like hemp tea might be a little bit easier for us to obtain. Um, hmm. And then we can always, like, in town, buy chicken or fish or pike or something like that. So I think, actually, I'm going to unlock hemp tea. We collect hemp pretty regularly, and I can buy milk when it's available to be able to make hemp tea, which we can make often. Often enough to provide, you know, benefit from it. All right, that heavy armor that I got, uh, let's give that to shield. So his movement's going to drop tremendously. Uh, but as you can see, the guard and armor goes up a lot. And then Cathanon is going to take the old stuff. And then these rags are probably still better for dye. And then the farmer's rags are not better for anyone. Oh, uh, here is a new... Um, so I'm not actually going to be camping, but here's a new profession, which is Scholar. Uh, so, a Scholar adds willpower and can decipher codices and piece together in antiquities in the camp lectern. So sometimes when you camp, you'll have, um, like, random monoliths and the like to be able to analyze. Um, I don't, ha I'm not going to have any Scholars just yet. It's not one of those, like, mission critical early on to get, in my opinion. But I would like Might one in the future. I interest you in my humble wares, my good sirs? So I did need, uh, five sandstone in order to improve my campfire. Let's buy it. Anything that is, like, a trinket has no value. And then also, speaking of which, these gems have almost no use other than being sold. There's like a, a special case where like you need to use gems, but like gems are common enough that you don't need to hold on to them for special uh, occasions. All right, we are quick coming up on our uh, bounty targets. They're somewhere in this wood. I kind of want to catch up to this merchant to see what gear they have for sale, and then I'll go hunt the bounties. And uh, Soulblader, thank you for the resub, and Ink, thank you for the bits. Right, so thank you for the hype train. Ooh, nice. I like that helmet. Uh, is this bow any good? Ah, it's a flaming bow. I don't like flaming bows. I'm gonna buy the helmet. Because this helmet comes with some interesting abilities, which is... Venomous Coating. So applies one poison to any unit, dealing melee damage to this unit. So when shield gets attacked, he poisons them back. Pretty nice. Plus it increases crit damage guard and armor. Shield's looking pretty badass. She is looking pretty don't mess with me or I kill you. She definitely needs a better shield. Because right now this is just a lid of a barrel, a wine barrel that she's using. But, you know, we'll forge something at some point. Or buy something. Whatever comes first. Thank you for tuning in to War Tales, which originally streamed live on Twitch July 27th as a marathon. If you have any questions for me, let me know in the comments below, but please keep in mind that I'm relatively new to the game, and this was also streamed once as a marathon, meaning feedback cannot be incorporated. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, like this marathon, you can go to rodamont.com for my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams, as well as a link to Twitch. And if you would like to join my online gaming community as well, you can go to rodamont.com or a link in the description of this video to join Discord. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and those that turned out for the marathon, and also viewers like you that tuned in on YouTube and made it all the way to the credits. So thank you so very much. 
I hope to catch a next episode or an upcoming stream of mine. Farewell, my fellow mercenaries. <laughs>